Hey yo, so it's been one month since I got the ATK X1. So this is my review video on the mouse dubbed as the Razer Viper V3 Pro at home. Now I got this at pre-sale for $49.99 plus a free 8K dongle which uh, looks like this but I think they started raising the price and looks like it's around $69.99 at, at the moment so we'll just call it at $70 and uh, this is the cheapest model this is called the X1 Pro the other two models are the Pro Max and the Ultra with um, double the battery capacity that's 500 milliamp uh, capacity this one is 250 milliamp battery um, the pro max is at 79 dollars and the ultra is at 85 dollars respectively and about five grams heavier than this one uh, this mouse is 50 grams and the other two are 55 grams now tldr this is a great mouse that's not just a cheaper version of the original Viper V3 Pro but a legitimate competitor to the shape and the performance. So let's start off with the battery life and cleanliness check. I was juggling 5-6 mice over the last month so I cannot get any reliable data on the battery life but I can say that it is not an issue uh, I would be concerned about as far as uh, regular usage goes in the cleanliness department uh, you can see i have not cleaned this mouse in a month and it looks pretty decent so hang on let me grab the wet wipe and take care of this right quick i can't tell you how long I've, i was itching to give this a good wipe a good clean clean off the muck and grime and sweat build up over the last month oh now that it looks great let's move on i'll keep talking and wiping at the same time uh, we'll start with the shape and size now the x1 is almost a one-to-one -one copy of the uh, viper v3 and if you have a medium to larger hand this will fit you very well basically if you are familiar with a uh, gpro uh, super light this will be right in your wheelhouse because it's in the same range of size if you're comfortable with the gpro super light the viper v3 pro or the x1 is going to fit you just fine uh, the build quality itself i know uh, i know that there were some issues with the F1 uh, Ultimate being uh, a little bit squeaky, but I have zero issues with the X1 and overall, I am very happy with it. There's some wobbly M1 and M2 buttons, but that does not affect the performance of the mouse at all. It is a little bit wobbly, but there's no grindy feeling or anything like that. So it's going to be just fine. Uh, the coating itself, it has dry, grippy coating, and I would describe it as mild. And it's not as grippy as an Endgame Gear coating. Uh, you know, that is like the gold standard of grippy coatings, if, uh, if you could say that. It does a good job, uh, you know, well it does it well for me but if you have very dry hands uh, you might need a few minutes to warm up the mouse and kind of like activate the coating to make it a little bit more grippier now the buttons as i mentioned earlier the m1 and m2 is a little bit wobbly compared to the viper which has really tight zero wobble um, but like i mentioned earlier there is no unwanted grinding or squeaks when you engage them so this is a non-issue in my opinion uh, in the unbox video i commented that the m1 and m2 buttons uh, have a 
you know, springy feeling like the R1 Pro and R1 Pro Maxes. If you remember or if you're familiar with the VXE R1 Pro Pro Maxes, the the tensioning of the M1 and M2 had a like a kind of like a springy feel. But a month later it seems like these buttons have settled down and now they resemble the click feel and sound of a Ninjutsu Sora V2. I can confidently say that the click feel has improved after this break-in period you could say. The Omon Opticals are just a perfect balance of um, tactility and tension. The only clicks on this level of satisfaction is the Beast X Opticals if you remember that. And another one of my favorites is the HTX Ace with the zippy switches. Now let's move on to the feet. The stock PTFE feet, they are passable. But as with all PTFE feet that originate from this factory, like the uh, Ninjutsu Sora or Sprime PM1 or VXE or VGN, they slowed down almost within the first 24 hours and in the spin test it looks like it spins 50% less than it does on day one look at the viper in comparison very smooth still maintaining a strong spin with a strong finish and this one just dies off i'm trying to be aggressive here but that's the max i can get out of it so it has definitely slowed down and it has definitely deteriorated um i can't say it's bad but i won't say it's great either the only reason i haven't switched to some nylon 66s or altem dots is because i like to you know review the mouse in stock configuration i know that almost 90 percent 99 percent of people do not stray away from the stock feet now in terms of performance i've had two personal bests in the very limited time i spent with this mouse i was juggling six mice and nine pads constantly swapping and getting adjusted to different surfaces and speeds so to even get two personal bests and coming close on many other personal bests is already a very impressive feat in itself i cannot complain to any weaknesses of the x1 well maybe the ptfe feet but even that i wouldn't you know rip it off and swap it out unless you know i wore it out uh, but i do feel manufacturers should pay attention um, to this easy low hanging fruit just make your feet better it would increase the experience of your regular uh, you know customers who really don't have time to mess around with feet buy aftermarket skates or dots people just want to get it out of the box and use it immediately and have it work have it reliable and then have a good experience and have something good to say about the mouse after using it for a couple of weeks or a month in terms of value the current price of the mouse is 70 dollars and it seems to be pretty good value for this much money at 50 dollars pre-launch sale price i feel like this was a steal for me getting it at 50 dollars um, would i prefer a viper v3 pro at five grams heavier yes yes and only and i cannot stress this more only because of the better stock ptfe feet if the vxe had better ptfe feet i think uh, you know it could give the the viper v3 a real run for the money let's find out let's find out let's remove the feet and find out
Okay, so here we go. Wow. Already, I feel very positive about the mouse. Okay, here's the lowdown after switching out to Nitro Skates uh, Nitro Factory device. And uh, these are the Nylon 66 skates that are machined. These are CNC machined skates or um, CNC machine dots. They are the bomb. And uh, here's the lowdown. As soon as I have these skates on, the mouse doesn't feel 5 grams lighter than the Viper V3 Pro. It feels 10 grams lighter than the Viper V3 Pro. This feels legit, feels like a 38, 40, 40 gram mouse. This feels like my Sora, it feels like my Sprime. Super lightweight uh, because, you know, smaller skates, harder material, smoother floating over the surface. It just feels like, look, it feels like it's, that's, that's what it feels like. You know a 38 gram mouse does this, right? Super lightweight, just floating around. Uh, if I did that with the Viper, you can clearly see this is a heavier mouse. You can clearly feel it. it's more difficult for me to bounce it around like that from one hand to the other. I have to use a lot more force. But uh, with this, you see how, how light it is? It's like a bullet skating over the mouse pad. That is amazing. Let me tell you something about these Nitro Labs uh, Nitro factory devices, skates. These are really open my eyes to what is what is good in mouse skates. Um, I I never heard of Nylon 66 before, but now that I have, I can't really look at PTFE skates the same way anymore. These are just S tier dot skates. I never really, um, not to say enjoy, but I never really had good performances with dot skates. Uh, I've done a video about this before, how dot skates compared to big, fat, thick PTFE skates on Kovacs results, the big, fat skates always wins, always gets better Kovacs results. But now, I have a feeling that uh, this type of material is going to be the game changer in the industry. I think within the next year, you're going to see everyone migrate to this type of skates, either Nylon 66 or Altem or whatever materials they use. But machine skates are very different to stamped skates is what I'm getting, is what I think um, is happening here. Stamp skates just get a different kind of results and machine skates are like purpose-built. They're harder, they're lighter, they feel they feel smoother, they feel just overall 10 out of 10. So anyway, that's my video on the ATK F1 Pro review after one month. Hope you got some useful information. Maybe you will get some nitro skates for yourself. This is a real eye opener. And uh, yeah, ATK. See you on the next video. Bye.